Hello, everyone, and welcome to Dear Worship Leaders Series, the special edition on Dear Worship Leaders Series. I am Oluwakemi Ugwakeze. You know, it's always special because I always have somebody special, a worship minister, a minister also to speak with us. And today I have the privilege and honor um, to have with me today Barista Favor Uzo Zike. And today's topic, she's going to be speaking with us on the life of a worship minister behind closed doors. The life of a worship minister behind closed doors. So Favor, please, you're welcome. You can take over from here. Thank you very much, Auntie Kemi. It's a privilege, man. Thank you very much. Um, so let's dive into it quickly. As she said, I'm going to be speaking on the life of the worship minister or the worship leader behind closed doors. And I'll, I'll read two scriptures first before we start. And we can read from the Passion Translation, Psalms 27, verse 8. And it says, I heard your voice in my heart say, Come seek my face. My inner being responded. Yahweh, I'm seeking your face with all my heart. Another scripture, Psalm 27, verse 4. Here, the one thing I crave for, Yahweh, the one thing I seek above all else, I want to live with him every moment in his house, beholding his marvelous beauty, filled with awe, delighting in his glory and grace. I want to contemplate in his temple. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So the first thing I want to note about um, the life of a worship minister behind closed doors is that it is very private it is very personal it is just you and the love of your life jesus christ the holy spirit it is what people see is the finished product the main act because everybody in actual fact everybody is a worshiper he created us for his pleasure to worship him so it is first personal it is best first very very private behind beyond what people can see that quiet time that you spend so it is very important that we put more effort more time into the private worship that we have with our maker that involves your devotion a worship minister who does not have personal relationship with god is is a worship minister who will expire you won't have anything to show you won't have anything to do once you're in front of people it will be flesh to be self if you're not connected to the source how can you be able, how can you lead others to that source? So it's very, very private. So we must learn to have devoted, not the kind of relationship that, oh, you talk to him today and then after two weeks, or only when you have to sing. That is very, very dangerous. Because if you only spend time with your father only when you have to sing or when, when you have to minister, then that relationship is forced, it's fake. You know, there are, there are friends who you're talking to and you talk to them once in a while. And you know there are people who you talk to. You know how the relationship is. That's how it should be with the Father. Even closer than we talk to man. It should be every second of the day, you and the Holy Spirit, talk to him like your friend. Personal devotion, intentional, like a day cannot pass or six hours cannot pass without you talking to your best friend. Second thing is, the life of a worship leader is very confident. You must learn to be confident. Not in your own self, not in your skill, not in your, not in anything about you, but strictly, whole, wholeheartedly in God, in the ministry, in the assignment that He has given you. Because on this planet Earth, there are more than 50 billion people who can sing. There are more than a thousand billion people who are called to worship God like you. So you must be confident in the assignment that God has given you. That's what we talk about. Um, uh, what's it called? imposter syndrome feeling like oh if she's already doing it then why do i need to do it it will make you if you're not confident about your assignment or about god it will make you want to cow your gifts want to say okay if um, that person is already doing it oh then my voice is not needed no as a worship leader you must learn to build confidence in the assignment that god has called you in the voice that god has given you in your relationship with god strictly on god because if you don't have confidence, your gift will suffer. And the, the truth is that he will require everything he has given to us, we will account for it. So if he has given you a gift and you've allowed your insecurities, oh, I'm not good enough, oh, my voice is not nice, oh, she can do it better, stop you from doing your assignment, then you, he will account for it from you. You have you have a report to make afterwards. If, if you have, if you have, and the thing is that confidence is not built in one day. 
You don't mm. build confidence by pushing responsibility away. No, we do it scared. We do it afraid. We do it unsure. We do it even without feeling. And this confidence, eh, it differs for different people. No matter how many times I sing, I will still jitter. I will still, my hands will still sweat before I, even if I've done it a million times. But that, that to me shows me that, okay, my dependency is not on me. But you know, if it's for me, I won't do this thing. I don't boast in my strength. I boast in the, the, the fact that he even chose you. It means that there's something that he wants you to do. So it doesn't matter who has sang, or it doesn't matter who has released the song, or it doesn't matter who is singing or how gifted that person is. The fact that you have a privilege, it means that God has put something in you that two, three, even one person must hear. And so if you deny them of that because, oh, I'm not confident enough, or uh, if you're already complex, oh, they can do it better. After all, they can do it better. What is what's there for me to do? God will require that of your hand. And there are people who He has destined to hear that thing He has put on the inside of you. You are failing them. You are slowing their goods because they came to hear what God has put on the inside of you. So, as a worship minister, behind closed doors, you must build confidence. How do you build it in the Word of God? Fellowshiping with the Holy Spirit, He gives you boldness. Praise the Lord. Amen. And then the second one. Um, a, a worship leader must be secure in his gifting. Mm. It's almost like the confidence thing. You must be secure. You must know that you have a place in the in the kingdom. It doesn't matter mm. how many people can do it. You must be secure in what God has given you, in your calling, in the fact that you heard God. In the fact that, okay, you know that God has put something different on the inside of you. You must be secure. You must learn to build. It's still like building your confidence, but knowing that even if she can sing better than me, or her voice is sweeter, or, there are some people that God has just ordained for you to. Personally, when I sing, I shout. There's some people that they can never relate to my kind of singing. But even if it's one person that will be blessed by that my kind of singing, then, then I must know that. I have to be secure that all oh, this person sings beautifully well, but let that not affect me. Because if you're not secure, you'll be jealous. And that's once jealousy comes in, you will focus on that person and leave what God is doing in your life, then you cannot go. And there's a lot of competition inside this very, very unique worship ministry. But when you understand that God has given you something that is very, very different, and this is what we'll be doing for the rest of our lives. If you can you imagine all my life now? I've, I've seen worshippers. But can you imagine mm. what heaven's part will be like? Mm. There are many more people who can sing. So you must learn to build your self confidence. Be secure in your gifting. Okay, this is what I can do for now. As you're trying to go to be the best that you can be, be secure. Don't let inferiority complex rob you away from doing what God has called you to do. If He's truly the love of your life, you will try your best to keep showing up for him. A can sing, Sister B sings angelically. This person sings. Be confident in that particular style that God has given to you. Grow in it. Learn to be secure. Learn to be confident. Learn to know that you have a space. And that space mm. that God has given you, no other person can fill it up. That space God has mm. put you in, no other person can do it like you. Yes, they can do it. There are people who have been called to hear you. You must not feel that. Like it is an aspect you will give an account for. Praise the Lord. Then you must learn to rely completely on the Holy Spirit. Completely on the Holy Spirit. Not on your, no matter how skilled you can play the instrument, your voice is the best, you've gone to music school, you've learned it. You must still learn to submit to the Holy Spirit because without the Holy Spirit, we cannot do this thing. Bible says in John chapter 4, verse 24, God is spirit, and they that must worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. This thing is not a flesh thing, it's not a natural thing, it's not something that books can teach you. No matter what you've learned, the spirit part of it is, is very spiritual. Worship is very, 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 very spiritual, it's delicate. And the truth is, I keep saying this thing that if you don't rely on God, you cannot hear instructions. There are times when I've, I've been leading worship. And I hear the Spirit of God say, say this. What comes to my mind is, ah, God, what if I say this? And they, maybe I've never heard anybody do it like that before. So do what he's asking you to do. If you can go hear the Holy Ghost, if you are in the Holy Ghost. There are times when 
There was just one thing I said in the worship, and I heard the Holy Ghost say it after fighting myself. I'm like, okay, let me just say it. What's the... And somebody comes to tell me that, see, everything you said is only this particular thing. The songs, were, it's only this particular thing you said. That's because you're relying on the Holy Ghost. The scripture says, Jude 120, but you, beloved, build yourself up in your most holy faith, pray in the Holy Ghost as worshippers, please. We can never overemphasize the place of the Holy Spirit. He is your helper. He is your, even when you don't feel up to it, when your voice is not the best, when you don't know what to do, the Holy Spirit is your helper. This thing, eh, we are only the physical vessels he uses. It is him singing through you. It is him leading through you. So you cannot work without him. If my phone is not charged, it cannot work. If I don't have a sin inside, that phone cannot do anything. Do you understand? Like, there's still, it's still your son. God is only using you. So if you're not connected to the Holy Spirit, what are you doing? You're living in the flesh. Praise the Lord. I'll read a scripture. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. And this is Paul speaking. I, brethren, when I came to you, I came not with excellency of speech or with words of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you, save Jesus Christ and him through and him crucified. I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power. Let everything we do be a demonstration of God's spirit. It must be it naturally. We, we must learn in the realm of the spirit because what we are doing is not a natural thing. There are people's spirit that you must touch and with your natural mind, you can never know it. There are things that God will reveal to you about people that in the natural, you couldn't have ever known. So this, the, the work we have called, we are called to do is very, very spiritual. And how can you maximize it? How can you give it your best? The worst thing for anybody to do is to do anything and do it like a discipline or to do it and not reach full maximum potential. So if you want to be a worship leader and you want to reach the fullness of what God has called you to do, you cannot do it without your help. And you help us, Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Wow. Thank you so much. That was amazing. That no matter whatever God has given us, no matter what God uh, God has deposited, you know, there is no how we can, you know, just carry through this thing without the help of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is our help. And you have said a whole lot of things, yeah. That even the the, the, the private life of a worship minister is the most important. What people cannot see is much more important than where people, what people can see about you. That is more private, it's personal, and most importantly, build your confidence in God, not in yourself, not in your skills, not in your experiences. You know, like you said yes. as an example that even times, at times when you still want to go and minister, at that, at that point that you are climbing the altar, you still like, hey, God help me, you are still shaking. Then it means you are not depending on yourself. Oh. There are some people who just grab yeah, this thing I'll be doing it even from the womb. Give me the microphone and I go. Then they are depending and trusting in themselves. And the Bible says they are trusting themselves. Now, if you trust in the flesh, you can some this so such person is going to fail. But we have to depend on God, build our confidence in him. Thank you so much for sharing a lot with us. Thank you so much, and God bless you. So to we come in our next episode, remain rooted, remain planted, and remain connected, and never forget that you are a worship minister, your private life is more important to God and to you than your public life. Remain blessed and God bless you. Bye.